Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me today. For this message, we're going to be going over uh, disguises. Disguises. This is an old Michael Myers mask that I got some time ago. And that mask and different other variables of it will be seen tonight. And many other people will dress up as other creatures like zombies or Frankenstein or... Uh, whatever fact, you know, people that they want to portray as. Uh, now, they, they change their outward appearance not to match what's underneath. You, you don't take on the form of the person. You're, you're different underneath of the mask or underneath all the makeup that you're going to be put on uh, this, this afternoon. Now, to better, better illustrate the point I'm trying to make, if you go with me to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. So Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. It says, beware. Uh, so this is for something to be on the lookout for. So you know, be aware of, of this factor. So be aware of what? Uh, it says of false prophets. Now, when you see false prophets, you, for me anyway, you, you think of the teaching that the false prophet does. You, you look at, you know, the fact that Jesus Christ came uh, from a virgin. Now, now, there's many people that don't teach that, you know, that Jesus came from a virgin. Now, his death, burial, and resurrection is our only way into heaven. Uh, now, there is other religions that, that, that put that, um, that his death, burial, and resurrection wasn't enough. Uh, that you have to do other forms. You have to have this Bible and several other books to help guide you. Uh, they don't see Jesus in some aspects and some teachings. They don't see Jesus as the Messiah. They see him as Michael the Archangel. They, they say you don't, you don't pray to Jesus. You pray to Mary. That There's different forms of false teachings, false doctrines that you can come across with, but this verse doesn't say that. Let's continue with that verse. So it says, Beware of false prophets which come to you, which, which may present themselves in sheep's clothing. Now, the reason why that is important, now imagine, if you will, I'm coming to you and I'm having the appearance of a Christian. Now, the appearance of a Christian is something that we, a person tries to do. Now, the Satan himself, let's just continue with it before I go much into detail. But inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. So imagine this ravenous wolf, and they don't want you to see the ravenous wolves. They want you to see a Christian. They want you to see a sheep. So they put aside and they cover it up like we do during Halloween, we cover up who we are and we put on something that we're not. So false prophets and false teachers, they'll put on a facade as a Christian to disguise themselves as being one of you. Uh, now, what is deceiving is, is how do you spot that? Like say if you take on this, you know, you wear a Michael Myers mask, how can you know that it's me? Well, Scripture says in verse 16, it says, ye shall know them by their fruits. And the reason why it is so important to study Scripture, to be in a sound church, to have sound doctrine, is so you can spot. You can see the fruit of what they do. You can see if they are a Christian or not. Uh, if they, if the, you know, sheeps have a certain walk that they have through their life. You know, you can see different sheeps. Now, wolves and stuff, they, they work off of a different aspect. So you can see by their fruit. Now, another aspect that we need to look at is found in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. I'll just read this briefly. It says, For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Now what does all of these verses say? Many people 
fear going to haunted houses. They seeing that that, you know, the haunted houses, the haunted cornfields, and all of these things you should avoid. You should not go anywhere near. You should stay away from. But Jesus is saying some of the most scariest people that put on this facade is not necessarily the demons and everything that they dress up temporarily once a year. These demons you may bump shoulders with at church. You may sing beside in the choir, if you have a choir in your church. These people you may even consider a brother and sister in Christ. And that is something that he is saying, beware of. See, most, if you look at the, the statistics of serial killers, most serial killers have a family. They have a wife, they have children, and they disguise themselves as a good member of society. It, it, it is something that is deceiving. Now, in Scripture, in Genesis, Satan is shown as the snake or the serpent. You know, how he showed up and, you know, he made Eve and Adam eat of the fruit. Then we look at the revelations and we see him as the great dragon. And then we see him depicted as a you know, roaring lion seeking who may devour. So we see animals and different factors. But in Job, let's go to Job real quick. Job chapter 1, uh, this is how he is depicted. And I think that this is probably the scariest form that, that, the, that Satan uses. Verse 7, chapter 1 of Job. So Job 1... Uh, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, And the Lord said unto Satan, one, whence, Let me re read that again. The Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Now, if you just read over that verse, you could just see that where is Satan? walking to and fro in this world. And the question is, why wasn't he spotted? Now, they're talking about Job. So they're, they're close enough to Job's property or his land or wherever it is, and he, you know, have you considered my servant Job? Or where have you been? Now, God's not asking this question because he doesn't know where Satan's been. He's asking him this question to let us know where he's been. What we do is we see people and we see whatever disguise that they show us. But God can see past disguises and God can see what's in a person's heart. What is their motives? What, what do they do? You know, the, the fruits you shall know them. But I wonder, how often do we put on a disguise that is far more dangerous than Michael Myers? That we put on a facade that says that we're Christian and we put on the right clothing and we show, what are we on the inside? Are we ravenous wolves? Are we, what do we have on the inside? It says out of the heart proceeds all of this evil in Scripture. How are we on the inside? Because man looketh on the appearance, but God looks at the heart, it says in Scripture. So instead of focusing on the outward appearance, focus on the end. Now, when he goes to the, the scribes and the Pharisees in Scripture, he calls them, you know, whited sepulchers, where they appear righteous on the, the outward, but on the inside that they're full of dead man's bones and all of corruption. He called them, you know, vipers. God is able to see what we have underneath. So as we go through this Halloween time and we see all of these people dressed up in all of these forms, We should focus on what is underneath of those forms. How do we present to God? Does God see only a fake? This disguise that we have, that we have all of these people fooled, or what is underneath of our disguise? 
if we were to take off all of our righteous clothing, if we were to just set it apart and we were just to take what we have and we become, I guess, a different form to God and we just say, this is who I truly am. Do you disguise yourself for people? What is underneath of the facade that you give? My prayer is that we, what we put on the outward is what we have on the inward. God bless you for watching. Thank you so much. And have a blessed day.